Hey tacticians, Sam here. I'm the set lead for Magic and Mayhem, a whimsical and hectic twist on the world of magic. In the Magitorium, all types of magic are welcome. And our champions have harnessed an incredible variety. Now, they're ready to test their magical might on the battlefield, so I hope you are too. In Magic and Mayhem, specialize in whatever form of magic tickles your fancy. We've got fire magic, ice magic, witch magic, you know, all your standard magics. But there's also mayhem, so let's get chaotic. First things first, bees. Honeymancy champions summon tiny, untargetable versions of themselves, swarming their enemies with sheer numbers. The Honeymancy roster may make for a go-to reroll comp, but with the charm stacking King Beegar as your carry, you'll be a total buzzkill for your lob bees in the late game too. You heard me right, charm stacking, which will make a lot more sense later, I promise. If you've got a sweet tooth, we've got the perfect trait for you. Sugar crafters build a cake filled with power and treats by collecting sugar for each item component your team has. Each layer you bake will power up sugar crafters with saccharin stats. When the cake is finished, more rewards are sure to come. With late game scaling, all you need is fructose and glucose, and your opponent is toast. Piece of cake. Eldritch is one of my favorites. A lot of people on the team say it freaks them out, but I don't really get why. <laughs> Anyway, this trait summons cuddly friends. And if you hit nine Eldritch, the biggest, cuddliest friend of all comes to scout your board. Briar will make her TFT debut as the five cost for Eldritch. And she's hungry as ever for friendship and blood. Satiate her hunger with your player health and you'll grant her HP. Plus, she'll deal more damage the lower your tactician health is. Win-win. We're also welcoming Smolder to the Convergence for the first time as the five cost for our dragon trait. This little 80 carry will fly around the battlefield, attacking the nearest enemy and dropping fireballs from above. Dragon will also bring back Shivana as a shapeshifter and Namzi from Dragonlands as a one cost with a fiery sneeze. Dragon's attacks and abilities burn in room, and if you can field all three of them, the power of their fiery friendship will upgrade all of their abilities. Then there's Witchcraft, whose units curse enemies with their abilities, making them lose a portion of their max health, take extra damage from witches, and eventually transform them into frogs. The five cost queen of witchcraft is also queen of the bats. Morgana sends out bats that seek nearby enemies, dealing extra damage if those enemies are low health. When her pretties kill an enemy, they have a chance to abduct it, granting a one star copy or one of their item components. Let the bat napping begin. I think we have time for a couple more spoilers. The chrono trait starts a countdown, sped up each time a chrono champion casts. Once the countdown completes, your team will restore a portion of their health. But at later breakpoints, the trait has the power to stop time for non-chrono units, or even chrono break all your units back to max health. Whoa! I wasn't done here. I haven't even talked about the chrono units yet. Karma will be your go-to AP carry, taking up heaps of damage over time, while the five-cost Camille creates a zone where she can bend time and her opponents to her will. To bring the time magic fantasy of Chrono to the Convergence, we're looking to the stars with Wild Rift's Stargazer skill. Like Silco from Arcane or T-Hex from Legends of Runeterra, we're always excited for timely collabs. All right, that's enough for me. You'll see the rest when the set drops on PB. But like I mentioned earlier, we still need to talk about charms. Matt, Alicia, give our friends the scoop. Hey tacticians, I'm Matt Dunn, the game designer behind this set's mechanic, Charms. I'm here with Alicia Loring, who helped us make Charms a reality in-game. Charm to meet you. I'm Alicia, the UX lead for TFT. Charms are magical abilities that you can purchase from the shop once per round from anywhere from 20-ish gold to completely free. They do a whole host of wild and wacky things, but their power is tied to their cost and the stage to become available. You'll only be able to buy one per round, despite seeing multiple if you roll enough, so you'll want to pick the one that's most useful to you at any given moment. Let's talk through some examples, starting with a simple one. Phantom Gloves. For three gold, you'll get a temporary Thief's Gloves until the end of your next player combat. Is it really a Thief's Gloves if you don't get to keep it? A more big brain example comes from the Copycat Charm, which grants you a one-star copy of the first enemy champion to die during the next player combat. 
There are also charms that appear during the mid-game, when you have a bit more gold, but you're still tinkering with your strategy. Reclamation is a cheap charm that breaks apart items on bench champions for a round. Combat-oriented charms are likely to appear during the mid-game as well. Earthquake stuns your opponent's board for two seconds at the start of combat, while Silver Guard makes your team immune to crowd control for the first few seconds of the fight. Talk about a hard counter. Later in the game, you'll get offered more expensive and powerful charms, like Spawn Swarm, which for eight gold will make it so your dying champs spawn a small void lane. Gross. All fives, a medium price charm, will immediately re-roll your shop into all five costs. It's perfect for taking screenshots to show your friends just how lucky you are. Lastly, we have Ascendant Charms, which come from Zerath, a five-cost Arcana champion with the unique Ascendant trait. Zerath, whose ability launches a barrage of arcane blasts at enemies, can grant you access to charms like the Tower, which summons a large target dummy for a round that strikes enemies with lightning, or the Sun, which will grant you a support anvil and an artifact anvil. With all these exciting late game charms, we expect to see some crazy final two or three player fights as players desperately charm roll to eke out just one placement better. When the team came up with charms, we had to figure out just how to make them make sense in the game. My personal approach is that UX should feel like magic. It should fade into the background and feel like a natural extension of your powers as a tactician in the Convergence. You can see this philosophy at work with recommended items, augments and armory interfaces, or our favorite memory enhancer, the Team Planner. But for charms, we wanted to deliver something a little more delightful. When you buy a charm, it will follow your tactician around and show everyone in the lobby what type of magic you've got your hands on. And we're always looking for more ways to level up the overall TFT experience. So we're also working on quality of life improvements like new stats, or even ways to add more portals to TFT. With that, let's portal over to cosmetics. Hi everyone, I'm Theo, producer on TFT's cosmetics team, and we have a ton of new content for Magic and Mayhem to share with you. This is our biggest chibi drop yet, and we're starting with a little shock and awe. Chibi Misfortune and Chibi Battle Bunny Misfortune hit the convergence at the start of the set, just a few hours into patch 14.15. Like and subscribe. Looking for something a bit edgier? How about the Shadow Clone Assassin Gun Galactic? Chibi Galaxy Saiyan Z brings a finisher that will leave your opponent gray screen alongside an entire planet in the process. Then, in the spirit of buttery, flaky goodness, prestige Chibi Cafe Cuties Gwen will make her debut. She'll release with a widescreen splash art, a new precedent for our prestige tier content. She'll also have her own finisher, full of cute poses that will show you just what she's cooking. Spoiler alert, it's you. For those of you who want the full cafe experience, we're eager to serve. Or at least, these hardworking cafe bunnies are. They putter around the arena, serving croissants and sweeping up spills. But if you start sweeping the floor with your opponents, they'll swap their broomsticks for glow sticks and become your own personal cheering squad. Get a win streak going and, well, this happens. Lastly, a collaboration with an NA content creator who you probably know from his bootcamp. If you need another hint, check out this boo. The Bootcamp Boom will be available for all BoxBox Bootcamp and community participants for free during the Bootcamp and will be later added to the rotational shop for everyone to get in on the cubicle cardboard action. That's it for cosmetics for now. There will be a few more new tacticians and of course a new pass, but you'll have to wait till later to check those out. For now, let's see what the rest of the team is cooking up. Hello, my name is Riot Xtina, and I'm the product manager for TFT's events and set revivals. Before I reveal what we have in store for you today, I want to share some insights on our first set revival, Galaxies. Though we've shipped totally new game modes before, we weren't certain that set revivals would resonate with players. I mean, did players really want to get Blitz hooked every game again? Obviously not. That's why you have to scout. But you never, ever, ever pivot. <sighs> Sorry, I got caught up in nostalgia. And so did many of our players. On its launch weekend, the Galaxy's arrival made up almost half of total game hours. It's no wonder that mech units were three-starred 2,344,741 times. So, we're reviving another mid-set during Magic and Mayhem. This one will bring back fan favorites like Hellion, Abomination Scion, Vertical Legionnaire, 
and of course, our first legendary unit that costs six player health instead of gold. Yep, I'm talking Teemo. Reckoning Dawn of Heroes was the mid set for our fifth set and has a reputation of being one of TFT's biggest comeback stories. The set introduced mechanics that have become core parts of TFT, like Radiant Items, Armories, Divine Blessing, all of which have inspired various portals, augments, and more. We're adding a few updates, some of which are certain to surprise even our most dedicated Reckoning players. But we're not stopping at in-game updates. We heard that players wanted more, and this time, we'll also be adding progression outside of the game that will be specifically for the Revival. The Dawn of Heroes Revival will be up for three patches, starting patch 14.19, just a few patches into Magic and Mayhem. Okay, I've got to wrap this up, but expect more information after Magic and Mayhem goes live. Hey everyone, Sherman here with an eSports update before we do our last Magic and Mayhem spoiler. We've just finished our first set with our new competitive model. We're filming this in early May, well ahead of the Inkborn Fables Tactician's Crown. Last year, we brought our first ever TFT Open to Las Vegas. It was a huge opportunity to see the Western TFT community come to life. This year, I'm excited to announce that the next TFT Open is headed to Macau, December 13th through the 15th. Similar to how last year's Open was played on the second patch of Remix Rumble, the Macau Open will be played on our next set when it's still fresh. But don't wait to start prepping. Your ranking for Magic and Mayhem will determine your registration order for the Open. We're doing our snapshot on September 2nd, with ticket sales releasing later that week in a bracketed order based upon your rank. Tacticians Crown participants from Runeterra Reforged through Inkborn Fables will get first dibs. Challenger players will get access a day later, Grandmaster and Masters players the following day, and the remaining competitor tickets plus general admission tickets will be released the day after that. Wow, that was a lot of info. But don't worry, if you need this in writing too, we just published an article with more info on the dates, ticket sales, and format. And for once, I'm not last. Peter, take it away. Hello everyone, Peter Whalen here. The last time we checked in, Mort and I shared our new three set a year model. You all have been super excited about this, and it's awesome that we're now living in this world. With three sets a year, we have three pods working on a longer timeline to deliver higher quality content. At this point, we've learned a lot about what good looks like, from mechanics to traits, all the way to thematics. We're committed to investing in the stuff that makes each set feel special, like fun and unique portals, augments, and evergreen systems like items. Shout out to the 20 new artifacts released earlier in Inkborn Fables. We're also focused on the first 10 to 30 hours of a TFT player's experience. Learning the ropes of a deep, strategic, and fast-paced game is incredibly rewarding, but it shouldn't feel demoralizing. We're not quite ready to share just how we're looking to better this experience, but we can assure you that not only will this be good for new players, but also for you, our current players. Just think about how much easier it could be to get your friends into TFT and help your double up climb. We've come a long way from summoners flooding the entire board with particle effects, or Ash accidentally firing a crystal arrow into a board far, far away. And with that, thank you so much for being a part of the TFT journey. TFT would not be the same without you, because together, we are TFT, and our future is bright. Oh, and before I forget, I think it's time to let the cat owner out of the bag. Thanks to our friends on Legends of Runeterra, we're bringing Yumi's owner to TFT, Nora. Everyone's favorite portal popping Yordle will be hitting the convergence as a five cost in our portal trait. The trait is the perfect match for Nora. The only thing she loves more than tea, cats, and magic is when all of those things fall out of a portal at random. The trait shields portal units and then ejects random stuff throughout combat. We're talking about things like Zig's bombs that deal magic damage, Horror snacks that heal your allies, maybe even a wild Krug. We can't have Nora without her feline companion. Nora's legendary explorer trait brings Yumi along for the ride. Yumi will fly around on book, helping out her friends and using her ability when Nora casts hers. There's lots more magic and mayhem to discover, 
So be sure to check out Nora and the rest of the roster when the set goes live with patch 14.15 on July 30th. See you then.